Hello again and welcome back, friend. Today we're going to talk about Mr. I have to pay the tax man himself, Elon Musk. The Elon you've all come to know and love, or hate, is largely portrayed as a green energy guy. What does he want with moldy old oil? So back in March, when Torchlight Energy was coming down off of an Antlers trading run, the phrase moldy old oil was used as a FUD or FUD tactic. And I still laugh every time I think about it. Who wants moldy old oil? As if oil can really go bad. The resistance I met with most is, well, Elon's a clean energy guy. Heck, he's even providing a prize for the best carbon capture system. Why would he want anything to do with oil? And to this, I say, the answer is yes. In this video, I'm going to show you some evidence, uh, past and present evidence that lines up this chain of events of why Elon wants oil field. In my previous videos, I've talked about the outrageous things billionaires do just to spite each other, like having a space race, for instance. And in that video, I theorized that Elon wanted the former Torchlight or Grande Basin to acquire methane for his rockets. In other previous due diligence essays, I've compared this to other notable billionaires, such as Bill Gates. Bill Gates is the largest private landholder in America because he wants to farm corn and soy for those soy lamp burgers or something. Corn is used to create ethanol fuel which in America is touted as cleaner than gasoline for some reason. When I was studying to earn some type of achievement in environmental science, I wound up learning that ethanol fuels are actually not that great for the environment. Among many other new facts, it really put into perspective what agendas are trying to be pushed to you, what is construed as environmentally good or environmentally bad. So going back to corn, Growing corn in America requires a big use of water. Remember that Jack Nicholson movie, Chinatown? Well, it was about the water shortage in California with another mystery plot twist to it. So 70% of water used uh, in California is by big agriculture. There was a wonderful documentary about Palm Wonderful and privatization, privatization of water in California. Corn does use a lot of water, and in other countries that use ethanol as fuel, such as South America, it comes from sugarcane. As sugarcane grows very well in South America, sugarcane is turned into ethanol, and most of the vehicles down in Brazil were equipped to run on ethanol. And this was during the winter months. Winter months, vehicles would run on ethanol because it was after the harvest season. Studying emissions, I learned that ozone increases in Brazil during uh, the winter after sugarcane season as ethanol is the cheaper fuel source and most cars are thus equipped to run on ethanol. However, this comes at a price as the ozone in the atmosphere increases dramatically. That's right, ethanol contributes to ozone and water shortages. There's no such thing as a free lunch, right? It has to go somewhere. In this article, you can see that there was an impact study which showed a 20% decrease in the ozone amounts, switching back to uh, gasoline. This was done in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And it showed that when people switched back to gasoline in the summer months, um, ozone went down dramatically, 20%, because the fuel that they were using was gasoline. Now, fossil fuels are a limited resource, but so is fresh water, which is needed for crops. Surprisingly, it's not Brondo that we need for crops, it's, it's toilet water. We also need potable fresh water to drink, as many creatures on this planet do. And with an increasing demand on water, well, the price of water either goes up to reflect that supply, or something has to be cut to lessen the demand. So water is a scarce resource. So we have a water shortage. Ethanol 
contributes to ozone. Bill Gates has corn. How, how does this all relate to Elon? I forgot. Let's go back. Ethanol produces emissions and uses water. Rocket ships are also known for emissions, but how many emissions do they actually produce? Are they all bad emissions? Is there any good emissions? This is an interesting subject. People often come to me and they tell me that Elon's a clean energy guy. And I say to them, how is rocket ships clean energy? <laughs> to which they go, oh yeah, rocket ships. Hmm. And then they scratch their head and we're both left like, aha, or hmm. So it turns out there's this team of people at the website Everyday Astronaut. And they've created a great article on rocket ship fuels and their subsequent emissions. I suggest you read the article in its entirety. It's really, really good, actually. The article cites Musk's uh, rockets and his Raptor engines, specifically. And the Raptor engines use methane. Liquid methane. And it also talks about Jeff Bezos' Blue Origins rocket using, again, liquid methane. They both use liquid methane. Now, I'll cite my video, which I suspect Elon wants Bezos to purchase rocket fuel from him. So, Elon buying all these oil properties just to get the methane really wouldn't be out of the question. Let's, let's look at this other notable wannabe. Well, let's look at this other billionaire. He's the wannabe corn star, Bill Gates. And he has the largest uh, private land holdings in America. He has the most farmland. So everyone can purchase corn and soybeans from him. And he can make soy burgers for McDonald's, what have you. A big proponent of uh, drilling for natural gas is oil and methane. According to this article, swamps and wetlands are the biggest proponent of naturally occurring methane in the atmosphere. The key here is atmosphere as methane from oil is abated in bedrock. That's natural occurring methane, but at the time, it's abated in bedrock. Oil and gas are attributed to a significant amount of human-made methane sources. Now, it's human-made because we drill it out of the bedrock. It's natural occurring if it's in the bedrock, but it becomes human-made once we extract it from the bedrock. And this particular article here also cites that oil and gas create the biggest methane emissions in the energy sector. So, like, what if Elon wants methane for his rockets, and at the same time, he can abate all this methane coming from the oil and gas energy sector? And then Bezos has to buy the methane from Elon now. Or Bezos can put a dome over a swamp or something. Well, what about burning methane as rocket fuel? Doesn't that create harmful gases and emissions let's go back to that everyday astronaut article which also has a lot of fun charts ah visualized data this article by everyday astronaut compares the five most popular types of rocket fuel rp1 hydrogen methane solid rocket fuel and hypergolic fuel the article gives a great table on the types of rockets used circa March 2020, which is very close to today, November 2021. And the chart also lists the emissions that each types of these rockets put out using their respective fuel. The article goes on to state that it that the usual suspects of rocket fuel emissions include carbon dioxide, CO2, water vapor, carbon soot, carbon monoxide, which pretty much will all bond and become carbon dioxide. So the carbon monoxide comes out, but there's so much heat it becomes carbon dioxide. Nitrogen oxides, aka NOx, chlorine, alumina, and sulfuric compounds. Then the article also states that the most harmful emissions to the atmospheres, the ones that are the most difficult to disperse and abate, are listed by the EPA, nitrogen oxides, aka NOx, sulfuric ice, sulfur oxides, and carbon monoxides as pollutants. Again, these things are also 
bad the bad things which cars produce or smog in a city. Smog in a city is also uh, attributed to a lot of ozone. Also, this article doesn't state about ozone and smog, but that's a big proponent. Sulfur is a huge one. Ozo uh, oxides are a big one. Chlorine, alumina, and nitrogen oxides can destroy ozone and therefore considered ozone depleting substances or ODS by the EPA. And they've been heavily monitored and restricted in America since 1996. Not other countries, but America. Again, EPA is an American organization. So, looking at this article, the big emissions to look out for NOx, nitric oxides, alumina, carbon soot, and inorganic chlorines, and carbon and sulfuric compounds. Now, let's take another closer and compelling look at that emissions table again. Let's take a look how Starship, which uses the Raptor engines that run on liquid methane, can produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. By the way, water vapor is greenhouse gas. Surprise! Water vapor is a greenhouse gas. I know you're all taught that carbon dioxide is greenhouse gas, methane is greenhouse gas. Well, what else insulates the earth? What else is in our atmosphere that does a good job because it has a high heat capacity? Water. Man, if I could see the look you're giving me right now. But it's probably the same look you give me watching my crazy face on any of these other videos. So this table shows that Starship has the highest payload to emissions ratio. The article also states that the numbers used for Starship are higher because of the data used for their environmental impact report use the highest output available for Starship. So this is on the higher end of things. Not the average, but more or less on the higher. It's an environmental impact report. They were doing a worst case scenario. And that's what this article uh, cites as well, that the numbers used seem so high. Well, one, Starship's a huge sh rocket ship compared to all the other ones. And two, the numbers used were due to them estimating things to be higher for their environmental impact report that's when they do a secondary study a follow-up study it's like look see we've we've improved so much we've improved look at how much lower our numbers are now so starship being huge naturally produces the most co2 but look it it doesn't really produce any of the real baddies such as sulfuric compounds alumina so what's elon trying to do here Behold, a giant Elon looks forlornly away from the Earth. He's trying to capture carbon like the Pokemans by offering this prize money of $100 million and other prizes like Frito-Lay's contest. Maybe an RV. Again, these outrageous things billionaires do. <laughs> so, let's put this in a linear fashion. We have the oil and gas. We have the oil and gas industry here. And this guy says, oh, I have too much methane. And here's Elon with his uh, spaceship. Starship heavy. And he's like, oh, I need, I need methane. Well, and here's the EPA person. And they say, Arr, make less emissions. You there, make less emissions. You there, make less emissions. So, Raptor engine in the Starship runs off of liquid methane, and it produces two primarily greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. That's carbon dioxide and water vapor, which, compared to all the other emissions, are, like, the most reasonable to, to control. It's much more easier to control carbon dioxide right now than it is carbon suits or sulfuric pine compounds or nitrogen oxides so elon here wants to play pokemans and capture all the carbons and maybe jeff bezos might have to go to elon to get methane for his rocket ship blue origin well what does oil fields have to do with elon he's a clean energy guy see it turns out that the cause of one problem is the solution to another problem. 
Elon wants rocket fuel. And the energy sector is pressured to lessen the methane. Let's look at this investor presentation from Continental. So when COVID-19 shut down most of the country for several months, uh, Continental says, look how much we reduced the methane emissions. I find this funny because, you know, they use this for their ESG sector, their clean energy, like, oh, look how much we reduced methane and other emissions in 2020 compared to 2019. Remember what I said when SpaceX wrote their impact report with the higher numbers and then the next year they're going to say, haha, look, we reduced those numbers. Very similar. 2019, they're pumping oil, making emissions, and then 2020, everything shut down, including oil industry. This is why Torchlight couldn't really sell their property in 2020 because, well, everything was shut down. And now they have to complete the lease obligation by drilling because, again, they couldn't really drill in 2020. Everything was shut down. But Continental says, look at us. We reduced methane emissions by a significant amount. Aren't See, we're, we're going towards clean energy. And justify the means. But hey, no such thing as bad publicity. They have too much methane, oil and gas industry. He needs methane. Maybe he's going to pull Bill Gates and buy it all or buy some or try to bait the others. Whatever it is, there's going to be, whatever it is, there's strong evidence of a partnership forming. So now kiss. From using liquid methane as fuel for the Raptor engines, we have uh, the byproducts, which are carbon monoxides, which then quickly fuse to become carbon dioxide. And then we have water vapor. And these are considered to be more, I guess, green or easier to deal with than other rocket emissions, such as carbon soup, nitric oxide, sulfuric compounds, which the Raptor engines don't produce as they run in liquid methane. And then Elon is using this proverbial carrot on a string to encourage uh, companies to create carbon capture systems. And he's even offering this huge prize to who comes up with the best system. Now, is it to really save the environment? Is it so he can use Bitcoin without, you know, people shaking their finger at him? Is it so his rockets can have little to no emissions? They can have, you know, pretty close to net zero emissions? Well, the answer is yes. Yes to all of it. Yes. Yes. Is it Bitcoin? Is it you care about the environment? Is it to save money? Is it to make yourself look good? What's really going on here? Yes. And to tie this all together, the beginning element in all of these problems really is our good old buddy Dino. Our good old hydrocarbonist friend, oil. So what does Elon, clean energy guy, want to do with moldy old oil and he wants these oil fields for? Yes. Okay, guys, thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope this sheds a lot of light on things. And again, like I said, my specialty is business transactions, who knows who, potential business deals, motivations, why they might want this, either for a fiscal reason, some sort of goodwill. Reducing environmental emissions is a big goodwill on a balance sheet. Uh, thank you for watching. I will catch you later. Bye.